Washington and Pyongyang after the Sony hacking scandal. We cannot give in to threats or intimidation. The World Health Organization says more than 7,500 people have died from Ebola. As long as there's still one case, there's always the possibility of transmission. The U.S. economy grew at its fastest pace in more than a decade. You may not know it if you listen to the people screaming on Capitol Hill. In the third quarter, it grew by an annual rate of 5%. In France, authorities are deploying 300 extra security forces following a series of attacks which left one person dead and 30 injured. French authorities say they don't see a connection to terrorism. NASA is dreaming of building a city that floats in the clouds above Venus. Given the technology that we have now, it seems like a doable type of a thing. We began with the very latest on a series of cyber skirmishes and the question, could it trigger a cyber war? In Seoul, South Korea, the president there is blaming cyber terrorists for a grave leak of data from the firm that operates that country's 23 nuclear power plants. Now, North Korea is a suspect in that hack. They are, what you might say, rebooting after a nine-and-a-half-hour Internet outage that took that country offline. Now, so far, no one has taken responsibility for either the South Korean nuclear hack or pulling down North Korea's Internet links. And the U.S. State Department is not confirming or denying anything. I don't have anything new to share with you today about North Korea. The president has spoken to what our potential responses, separate and apart from what we've seen over the last 24 hours, might be. And I leave it to North Koreans to talk about if their internet was up, if it wasn't, and why. President Obama had threatened a proportional response to North Korea, directly accusing that country in the massive hack of Sony Pictures. Now, North Korea threatened attacks against theaters that were showing that comedy, The Interview. The film's plot is based around a CIA scheme to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. Now, after initially pulling the interview, Sony now says that that film will be screened in independent theaters on Christmas Day that could be a couple hundred theaters around the U.S. Joining us from Watertown, Massachusetts, Dr. Jim Walsh, an international security expert, also research associate, at MIT's Technology Security Studies Program, and from Newton, Mass., Paul Roberts, a contributing writer at the Christian Science Monitor, who also posts on his own blog, which is called the Security Ledger. Uh, Paul, let's start out with you. Assuming that North Korea was actually behind Sony's hacking here, will they retaliate for the release of this movie in theaters across the U.S.? Uh, that's a great question, Adam. I mean, clearly we're in a um, tit-for-tat uh, situation here. We're, and playing a little bit of poker. So presumably there is other information. I mean, we know that they have not released all the data that was stolen from Sony. Uh, and presumably showing the interview in any form is going to be um, considered by whomever is behind this to be a, a hostile act. And I'm, I'm sure there will be retaliation in, in the form of further data leaks. But of course, they, those might have happened anyway. Um, this is extortion and we all know how extortion works. Jim, are you convinced that North Korea was behind this? Well, uh, you know, I'm still going to leave. Uh, if the FBI says that they did it, I think you have to go with that. Now, do I have the actual data in front of me to be able to evaluate this? No, I don't. So there's a bit of uh, trust and faith here going on. I must say, as someone who spent a lot of time on North Korea, a lot of parts of this don't add up. I, I think there was a 0% pro uh, probability that North Korea was going to go and attack U.S. movie theaters uh, and threaten terrorism and commit an act of terrorism against the U.S. That's, you know, exactly what they will not do because they don't want to risk a war. So they want to be provocative, but they want to sort of keep it below the line that would lead to something big. So, yes, I guess it's North Korea, but there are parts of this story that still don't make sense to me. You know, maybe down the road it'll, it'll all be clear, but not right now. Paul, what do you think? Was it North Korea? Is it possible that North Korea was set up? Is that possible? Um, I, I think cyber attribution is very, very difficult, if not impossible, and it's a huge waste of time for us to speculate about it. Um, of course, it's possible it's North Korea. Of course, it's possible that it's not, that it's some hacktivist group, uh, you know, Guardians of Peace or, or somebody else. There's always plausible deniability in online attacks. And uh, my presumption is if the U.S. government and the FBI are saying that it's North Korea, it's based on classified intelligence that they're never going to release anyway. Uh, and I know from sources that there is an aspect of this investigation, obviously, that is classified. 
Um, and so uh, I think we have to take them at their word. My sense is they probably do know it's North Korea, but they can't tell us how they know that. And the rest of us are left with the information that's out there in the public domain, and you can parse it one way or the other. Um, you know, you can look at the malware, you can look at the aspects of the attack, the uh, techniques and, and, pro and procedures they use and, and say it looks like North Korea or it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. None of us are ever going to get confident or secure uh, one, one way or the other. There's a big debate about what kind of words to use in this. Newt Gingrich, uh, John McCain, they called the Sony hack America's first cyber war. Meanwhile, President Obama, he called it cyber vandalism. Who's right? Is there too much hype here? Jim, what do you think? Well, I guess I'm a skeptic. I, I'm a bit of a traditionalist when it comes to security studies. This is a war. No one died. You know, in the, in the physical world that we operate in and uh, scholars who study it, uh, a war is something where you have a thousand battlefield deaths. Now, Sony was embarrassed. There were emails out. It, it's economically costly. That's all bad. And, and, but it's not a war. Uh, now, people can say it's it was different, and I do think it was different. Somehow this linking of extortion with threats of terrorism at individual movie theaters, if in fact that's what it was, you know, that's different. I agree with that, but it's not a war. Uh, and, you know, there are scenarios, we'll probably talk about them in the future, of things that could happen, but I think there's a lot of heated, overheated rhetoric about this yeah, in, let's, in the wake of Yeah, well, so what exactly would a cyber war look like? Paul, what do you think? What is a cyber war? What does it need to attain in right, order to so, reach that label? Well, that's a really good question, and I think one of the problems that this whole incident has brought to light is that we haven't had a, certainly not a public conversation, and my sense is even within policy circles, not a very clear conversation about what the ground rules are. And it's one of those things that people have been saying for years, you know, we really need to get clear on what cyber war is and what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. Paul? And this Sony incident kind of... It yeah. is, is our industries prepared for cyber attacks, cyber war? You actually wrote back in October that Homeland Security is warning companies uh, to be able to look out for what you call here black energy. What exactly is that? Is this a legitimate warning? Is what does that mean? Right. So there are there have been a number of incidents, black energy being one of them. There was another piece of malicious software called Dragonfly that have been targeting critical infrastructure, including energy uh, grid operators and, and other utilities. It's unclear whether these are designed as kind of uh, to give people a foothold that might be used in some kind of a cyber attack uh, that would, might be part of you know, cyber war, uh, or whether they are designed there to steal information that might be used competitively by, uh, by competitors. It's really unclear. And again, with, with, with online attacks, it's very hard to know for sure what their purpose is and who's behind them. So back in November, the NSA Chief uh, Admiral Michael Rogers warned of ongoing efforts to try and infiltrate uh, like critical infrastructure. Is the power grid most at risk here? What do you guys want to chime in on that, maybe, Jim? Well, you know, I think this is a problem we focused on pretty hard at the government level. I, back in the mid-1990s, when I was at Lawrence Livermore Lab, we had a project, or they had a project on critical infrastructure then. So, you know, for DOD, for particular categories of government, I think they've worked hard on this problem. I think it is a hard problem, but people have been aware of it for you know more than a couple of decades now, so they're working on it. I think private business less so. You know, a dollar spent on security is a dollar that's not a profit. So I think there's more challenges for big private corporations. Uh, Jim, you know, I think I, you make yeah. an excellent point right there. I mean, when you're talking about cybersecurity, this is very expensive in order to protect all of your infrastructure. We're going to have to leave it at that, gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Jim Walsh and Paul Roberts. Both joining us from Massachusetts. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Adam. Switching topics now to politics, starting with a 